Greetings Guardians, my name is Bife here. So, today we get to talk about some fundamentals of Destiny's universe. Today we're going to talk about the different planes of reality, the Ascendant Realm, the Ley Lines, and the Art of Wayfinding. This is one of those episodes that can be complicated, but I think there's a great way to start, which is with the most foundational principle of all, explained quite plainly by one of Destiny's characters in-game. We're going to look at Petra Venge's explanation and her coin analogy for how the universe works. Take a listen to this. Wow. Imagine the universe as a set of coins, stacked one on top of the other. The top coin is our reality, the bottom, the ascendant plane. Between them lies an intermeshing of ever-shifting pathways, known as ley lines. Almost all the ancient pathways are now defunct, but beings of paracausal ability can navigate and rebuild them. This is the art of wayfinding. This is the most basic and fundamental principle that we're going to be working off of. Simply this idea that Destiny's Ascendant Plane is the backstage of the universe's material plane. It's connected to the material plane via ley lines, which extend between the two realities. These pathways need to be cleared and aligned in order for us to travel them. That's the basics, at least. The rest is going to get much more complicated. Now, a lot of the lore here is lore that comes from dialogue throughout the season so far. It's possible that this video misses some stuff that's just not been mentioned yet, but we're going to talk about what we've learned so far, which I think is more than sufficient to understand the topics involved. I'm however not going to be showing a great deal of the dialogue that we might normally do, because there's just so much of it, and frankly if I was going to source every single thing in this video, we would be doing something akin to the hour-long video that we just did on Destiny's Basics, and, well, my editor needs a break. So, yeah, we're not going to go ahead and do that, this is going to be a much simpler edit. So. Mostly, I'm again just going to relay to you what each of the lines of dialogue says. We're not going to insert any of the references there, and we're just going to make this nice and simple. And hopefully the sound of my voice will guide you through this topic. So, in my Throne World video, I talked a lot more about the makeup of the Ascendant Plane, and we're going to be retreading some of that ground here as a result. But from what we've learned this season, and in the many lore entries of the past seasons and releases, the Ascendant Plane is what I'm going to call Psychomutable. Okay, complicated word, but let's break that down. The psycho part does not refer to psycho as in Alfred Hitchcock's film, it does not refer to someone's state of mind, it refers to the Greek word psyche as in mind, spirit, or soul. And the mutable part means simply that something is changeable. In technical terms, for the state of the ascendant plane, there is something about it which one's mind, soul, or spirit can change, hence the fact that it is psychomutable. This is the principle by which Hive Gods, Guardians, and Mara Sov, and Riven of a Thousand Voices are able to create things and be empowered in this plane. This is the biggest thing to understand about the Ascendant Plane. It's changed by the very thoughts and desires of those who enter it. Mara states that it is a place where cognition or thought meets causality, or the process by which things occur. Crow states that whenever he enters the Ascendant Plane, he feels uneasy, and Petra responds that that might partly be because him being in the plane and having these feelings makes the plane reflect those feelings back onto him. Mentally speaking, the plane is manifesting some of that unease. This is one of the key factors of the Ascendant Plane that makes it different from the Material Plane, as it affords beings of darkness and light, or paracles or power generally, a far greater degree of control. This is how the Awoken, particularly the Tekkens and Mara, have been able to learn the art of wayfinding, as within their race, it's Mara and the Tekkens that are specifically gifted with strong paracausal powers. So, that's mostly what we know about the Ascendant Plane, with the key exception of Throne Worlds, but again, we have a 30 minute video on that that we did recently, so go and take a look at that. But there are some questions of how one navigates this space. Now, you could do as Mora did, and just navigate in the dark. But the lore around that in the Reverie Dawn armor from Forsaken notes it as one of the greatest challenges that Mora ever faced, clawing away at her personality. Even as a Guardian, we would probably be in tremendous peril if we attempted to replicate such a feat. For all but those most powerful beings, this would be impossible. 
and therefore for us to navigate the ascendant plane there has to be infrastructure to support the traversal of the plane. There needs to be a bridge across the psychomutable sea, so to speak. These bridges are the ley lines. Now, I think a key thing to remember about the ley lines is that they are sort of artificial and they're sort of not. The ley lines exist within the Ascendant Realm, but they need to be stabilized by those who enter it. They're a bit like rivers in the sense that they can be polluted or changed by the essences of those that control them, but they're equally like bridges in the sense that they're directly controlled and traveled along once they're established. Ley lines are infrastructure born of the nature of the Ascendant Realm, and I'm not sure if this analogy is helpful or accurate given the nature of Ascendant Space, but imagine them as a road following the contour of a mountain. The pathways are always there, but they need to be built up and given solid ground to be efficiently travelled. Because of the fact that they are infrastructure, they also do not hold allegiance to one in control of them, meaning that they can be stabilised and leyline branches can represent tactical spaces that can be fought over or held. The thing that differs with the Ascendant Space, and as we can see with Shivu or Roth crashing together various pieces of Ascendant Space in the Shattered Realm, is that they can be moved if not stabilized, and generally speaking this makes the makeup of the plane a lot more wibbly wobbly, and a lot more sort of undefined and changeable. So yeah, it's a little bit chaotic to say the very least. Not surprising when you take a look at Ascendant Space that's controlled by dark figures and you realize that it's just a swirling mass of darkness and chaos and lightning far off and an infinite abyss as far as we can see. Not fun. Not good. Not good at all. The ley lines being tactical points worth holding too is a theme that's going to come up because ley lines can be used as a way of bypassing the constraints of travel within the physical universe. Let's put it this way, if I wanted to travel from modern day London to modern day New York, in real terms I'd have to get on a flight after having gone to an airport in a car or by the train, and then I'd have to land at that airport. Here's the thing, if you used the Ascendant Plane, conceivably you could use the Ley Lines to bypass that physical travel time, putting points in the universe closer together which is where this all gets interesting, because as Mara Sov stated, if the Blind Well fell to Shivu Arath, her troops would be able to access all ley lines instantaneously, allowing them instantaneous access to any place along the galaxy that they could exit the ley lines. Such a feat of logistics explains Shivu's obsession with controlling the Ascendant space around the Dreaming City and the ley lines within. Just as the Romans were able to conquer Europe with their armies marching faster thanks to the creation of roads, Shivu's forces would be able to strike with lightning speed, giving her opponents no time to react. It is very important that we control the ley lines not simply as a means of rescuing Mara's Techians, but also as a means of denying their use to Shivu or Wrath. The ley lines bleed paracausal power into the material world, which makes sense as that power is passing along the ley lines from the Ascendant Realm to the Material Universe. This is felt with particular strength at the Blind Well, whereas of recent changes, all the ley lines converge and can be accessed. Normally, ley lines can be accessed at any point at which they intersect with the Ascendant Plane, but this is something that is dramatically changed by the presence of the Awoken Beacon Network. The beacons are a little hard to explain, but they're a little bit like specific junctions or checkpoints that allow a further degree of stability and control and connect different ley lines to each other. And by doing this, the Awoken of the past forged the ley lines into pathways that they could more easily traverse. The important part is that these newly stabilized and connected ley lines cannot be changed so easily, which makes the Ascendant Plane far more navigable for any who do not contain the paracausal power of someone as supremely powerful as Mara Sov. According to Petra, at the end of one of the instances of the Shattered Realm, the beacons are also capable of creating a barrier against Shivo Rath's forces, further solidifying the Awoken's control of the leyline pathways. When connected into the network of other beacons, local beacons allow the Awoken a degree of detection and control within the Ascendant Realm, allowing them to uncover enemy forces that might be hiding in the vicinity and anyone who might be hiding that is also an ally, such as a lost Techion. 
Now, the beacons aren't exactly a free pass to create pathways without consequences, even within their protections. Shivu Arath and the Forces of Darkness can still make attempts to wrest control of the ley lines from the Awoken, and one of the key ways in which they are trying to do this in the Season of the Lost is the attacks that they have committed to making on the Blind Well through the Astral Alignment activity. The Blind Well is, for those of you who don't know, an Awoken device that carries a paracausal charge of energies. These energies were used initially to gain access to the Ascendant Realm, but specifically a singular part of the Ascendant Realm, Marasov's throne world, known as Eleusinia. Since then, it appears that the Blind Well has been opened up to all ley lines, and the paracausal energies within can be used to access any of them at any time. Losing access to the Blind Well, or sealing it off from the Ley Lines, would effectively mean that the Awoken would not only lose access to those pathways and the Tekians hidden at the end of them, but it would also cut them off from Marasov's Throne World, and by extension, any chance of lifting the curse on the Dreaming City. However, Ley Lines are like roads or bridges or rivers within the Ascendant Plane, and just because a road exists doesn't necessarily mean that there's a signpost telling you where it goes, or that it's the right direction. Desire and willpower are the ultimate arbiters of fate in the Ascendant Plane, and the Awoken of the Distributory, the original Awoken homeworld, apparently knew this. They used these principles and these understandings in order to create the Wayfinder's Compasses, artifacts gifted to those that left with Mara to form the Awoken Kingdom of the Reef back in Sol. They effectively point to one's desires or goals, and within the Ascendant Plane, if one's willpower is strong enough, they can remove obstacles in one's way. This is expressed in-game by the different powers in the Shattered Realm, such as Barrier Breach, Safe Passage, and True Sight, which you need a stronger compass that has been consistently upgraded with Parallax Trajectory in order to unlock. Sometimes, the powers of the compass remove restrictions, other times they can create new passageways to one's objective. All the bearer needs to have is the required paracausal will to use the device. It is for this reason that the compasses must be guarded against the forces of Shivu Arath, as in her hands her success would be all but guaranteed, thanks to Shivu's equally powerful paracausal abilities. At the start of the Astral Alignment activity, we place the Wayfinder's compass into the Blind Well, and using the well's massive paracausal energies, we are sent on our way to our desires, which commonly leads us to beacons that must be aligned in order for us to reach the Lost Techians, or to points along the ley lines which must be defended. This is not something which is well explained. It's not even properly understood truly by the Awoken. They simply state that the compass has a form of intuition, pointing the bearer to where they need to go in order to accomplish their objectives, but not exactly explaining why they need to be there, only that they need to progress in order for their objectives to become realized. Quite notably, Arga's Scepter, the new exotic weapon from the Season of the Lost that comes at the end of the Hollow Coronation exotic quest, is also something that is based off of a similar concept. The so-called Obsidian Feather of Riga at the weapon's heart is probably a way of saying that some of Mara's dark power resides within the weapon, and that that pool of dark paracausal energies represented by the glowing core of stasis at the weapon's center can also be used to shape the Ascendant Plane to fit one's desires, and to carve pathways to one's goals. In game, this translates as Argus Scepter's ability of being able to remove certain pathways within the Shattered Realm activity when we fire the beam at them. This doesn't remove everything, but it does unlock certain pathways that can lead to mysteries and loot, and achievements along the way. Finally, I think we need to talk about the Awoken that hold the knowledge of the Ley Lines and all other paracausal forces, if only briefly. They are called the Techians. Commonly, they're called Tech Witches by Guardians, and the statement here isn't necessarily wrong. Amongst other things, Techians are powerful paracausal beings that have their powers amplified by the various crystalline gems inlaid in their foreheads. They study paracausal forces in any form they appear, be they light or dark, and hold many of the secrets of the Distributory, the Awoken's birthplace. The coven that we pursue is actually a newly formed coven, made up of a series of new Techians trained specifically at the request of Petrovenge to help Marasov navigate back into the Material Plane. But this is a story that requires a greater degree of detail in time, and so I'll endeavor to tell that full story of where Mara went and how the Techians rescued her at another time very soon. 
That is actually a very important video because it explains the crux of why the Tekians are lost, what Mara was doing before she returned to us in the Season of the Lost and returned to the Awoken, and ultimately, what the goal of the season is in terms of the greater picture of Destiny, because it tells us about what Mara has been doing while she was gone. All of that and more is still to come, but for today, that's all from me for now. Thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. And if you have your own thoughts, go ahead and leave them down below in the comments section. Of course, if you want more content like this, go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. But as per usual, know that your viewership is quite enough for me. And that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife. Parodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside.